How's it going, friends? Matt here with my good friend Bill. We're having another brew day, and uh, we are making um, one of my older recipes. It's a Chipotle chocolate porter. It's one of the first recipes I ever created. Also one of the most award-winning recipes I ever made. Don't know how that happened. Um, and instead of just going through the brew day with you, I'm, we're just drinking some beer. We're going to have some beer with you. We're going to talk about some locals. Uh, we're going to focus on a couple of breweries today. We're going to be focusing on Manhattan Project. Uh, brewing Company, as well as Pegasus City oh, Brewing Company, also out of Dallas, Texas. Um, and we're going to start off with a pretty easy start to things. We're going to start off with Manhattan Project's Necessary Evil. It's their Pilsner. And uh, Pilsner is probably one of the most overlooked beer styles, I would say, because when people think Pilsner, a lot of the times they're going to think Budweiser or mm -hmm. Uh, cores and things like that. Um, not to be confused with like Bud Light, that's like a light lager, which is like adds corn and rice adjuncts. A Pilsner should only include barley. Uh, it's an all barley beer. Um, and Pilsner came out of two different regions. There was Czech Pilsner, which was using Czech hops, um, and it was much spicier. You know, yep. it, the hops were a lot more spicy, and it was a lot, um, it was a lot smoother. Then there was German Pilsner, which was using more German hops, and it was a little more floral in its profile, but it was a lot more bitter. Yeah, yeah, it's like it was a lot more, it was a lot more bitter. Like they were both using just Pilsner malt uh, in their base beer, and you know, it's a really drinkable, dry, very uh, low alcohol usually. Like, this is a 5.3, and that's pretty... Actually, it's usually between, like, a 4.8 and a 5.2, mm -hmm. uh, I would say. Good session beer. Yeah, it's a good session beer. And uh, it's a good day for it, you know, oh, to yeah. start off with a Pilsner. So, um, like, they, they're they definitely filtering. Oh, definitely filtering. Like, you can do, you know, it's crystal clear <laughs> as it should be. Um, and uh, in the nose, uh, just a nice, clean, very clean fermentation. There's no, like... Like a lager should not have a whole lot of, um, should not have a whole lot of esters, or should a, you know should be a very clean fermentation that shouldn't have any fruitiness, really. Like unless it's like you know amber lagers can a little bit, like alt beers and right. things like that. But like a pilsner or like you know golden lagers, things like Kolsch, that. Yeah, Kolsch. They should be incredibly really clean. clean. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, you know, it's a good, good, good clean finish mm -hmm. in the aroma. You know, a little bready. But like a li just a little bit, um, I'm thinking this is probably a like a German style pills. It's, it's yeah, it's got it's floral, so it's probably going to be German, um, according to uh, to like a hint of floral character. So I'm assuming they're using German hops. Um, there's a lot going on in the flavor. Like, a little bit more than I was expecting. Yeah. A little more medium body. You'd really expect a light body coming out of a Pilsner. Mm -hmm. Like, even, even a non-light non Pilsner. Um, and there's a fair amount of flavor happening here. Uh, a little bit more different than I was expecting. It is floral. Yeah. You know, nice floral character to it. But, um, I mean, and I'll drink it. It's drinkable. It's got a little bit of interesting characteristics to it. It's definitely of the Texas Pilsners I've had, and there are a few floating around. The Pilsner's a good region for Texas. Texas is a hot. good, yeah. It's hot and like it's just got it's got such German influence. Yeah, there's a lot of German there's a lot of German influence yeah. in Texas, so you expect to have a lot of Texas styles like Rar and Sons out of Fort Worth. Like they kind of like pioneered North North Texas craft beer like they've got a hellas and they've done pilsners and they've you know alt beers and black lagers like a lot of their signatures are very german style based um and uh so you have a lot of german experience now probably my favorite pilsner coming out of texas uh is probably the pearl snap pills from uh austin austin beer oh, austin beer Works. Yeah. oh man that is the mm -hmm. best best pilsner i've ever had this is this is not bad probably say top five in the region for for pilsner it's certainly drinkable yeah um there's just some interesting interesting flavors going on in this beer but like definitely worth checking out uh if you're ever in the area i don't think really get outside of uh 
outside of Texas or really even the Metroplex. Yeah, all I think that they're much local. Out there. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty small right now. They're they'll probably work their way up. There's a lot of breweries in DFW oh, just popped up out of nowhere. So uh, yeah, that's our uh, that's our first beer of the day, friends, and uh, definitely a good way to start. So cheers. Oh, cheers. Hey friends, we're back. Uh, we have added in uh, a bit of um, flavor to our to our porter. We've added in some ancho powder, a little bit of uh, espresso powder, and some cocoa nibs. Got about 20 minutes left in the boil before we knock out. And so we are trying a next beer, and the next beer is from Pegasus City Brewing Company. Um, and that is their Great Hall Hefe. It's a Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen is a Bavarian German style, so southern region of Germany, and it was made with a very specific kind of yeast. It is mostly a wheat beer. It's primarily made with wheat instead of barley. And normally, a Hefeweizen is also um, because in Germany there's Hefeweizen, there's Weissbier, mit or with uh, mit with Hefe or without Hefe. The Hefe is really kind of like the yeast. They kind of leave the yeast inside the beer. Um, in Germany, you'll actually see if, like, if you go to a bar and you order a Hefeweizen, um, they'll actually take the bottle before they pour, before they give it to you. They'll bring it to your table. They'll take it to the table. They'll roll it on the table and really stir the yeast that's in the bottle. They'll stir that yeast up because they want it in the class. Um, right off the bat, I notice something that makes me sad. You can see through it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this looks like a pale ale yeah like it's just like an orange like a light orange a little bit of bubbles uh we did pour it you know not too long ago so it did have a decent head on it but the bubbles are pretty much gone but you can see through it yeah. and like a half of ice should be fairly opaque um and like cloudy like you should be able to see the yeast in it um we put the we put the orange in there, you know, to make it look nice, but okay. uh, fancy. In Hefeweizens, you're going to the big flavors coming from the yeast during fermentation are going to be a lot of banana, clove, and um, and bubble gum. Bubble gum. Yeah. So they say this one's supposed to be on the banana side. On the banana side. Yeah. They went to the emphasis on the banana over the clove. Uh, well, I think I might have missed the mark a little. Not catching much in the nose. I mean, it might be from the citrus on the glass. Yeah, I took even with the citrus off. Yeah, like a little bit of cloviness. Um, really, no banana. Mm -mm. You can tell. I mean, banana will come out. Oh yeah, I mean, strong, and then it's not coming out at all. It's it almost just tastes like a light like a pale ale like you there's really no characterization no of there's no hefe. any of the hefeweizen there's characteristics there's no banana no clove no bubble gum at all no um it's kind of like a just a, a german wheat beer yeah <laughs> actually it's, it's, it's a it's an american wheat yeah, beer is american. what it is american wheat beers are pretty well filtered um i'm assuming yeah. there's wheat in here yeah it's hefeweizen is yeah yeah um, subtle citrus note Rounds out the flavor of the heady wheat beer. I don't. Uh, you might have missed the. I, I might just need another can. Um, you know, maybe it might have been a bad can. You never know. It happens. Um, but right now, I'm not too terribly impressed. Um, it's drinkable. It's a good beer. But if you put this in front of me and didn't tell me it was a half of ice, and I wouldn't know. I I would have said it's just an American wheat beer. Like, I wouldn't even know, like, maybe, like, yeah, right? You would drink it, wouldn't you? Brenda's in the sidelines here, and she doesn't like Hefeweizen, and she would drink this beer. You know why? Because it doesn't taste like a Hefeweizen. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you straight, friends, not every beer that I that I give you, because this is the first time I've had it, not every beer that I show you is going to be an amazing beer. This is a good beer, but if I were judging this beer... On style, mm -mm. Um, I would not. I would not give it good style. Well, they points. would give. They would get dings on style. Yeah, they would get dings on style point a lot, but uh, still tasty. Um, I've had some good beers from Pegasus City, so I'm hoping that uh, that this is just like a fluke. Um, and Hefeweizen, you know, 
you kind of have to do that. Like, that's a proper beer, and it's also really hard. Um, wheat beers, beers that have a lot of wheat in them, are really hard to make because there's no husk in them. You, uh, they're really hard to mash in and, and sparge out because sometimes you just end up with a mash that's like a brick um, if you don't use, like, rice holes or things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard beer to make. The yeast is very finicky. Um, so sadly, not, was I, not what I was hoping for. I'm still going to drink it, though. Yeah. So, uh, cheers. Cheers. All right. We are uh, chilling our wort to uh, get ready to, you know, pitch yeast and just have it start fermenting and getting happy. But we're going to have another beer while we're continuing to chill the wort down. Uh, this next beer is, again, from uh, Manhattan Project in Dallas, Texas. This is their X10. It's an extra pale ale. Like, there's not a whole lot of description about this beer of actually what it is. Like, extra pale ale is kind of a made-up style. Um... Most things that we've seen, like Untapped and all that, says it's uh, an American pale American ale. Pale American pale ale. ale. So if that's the case, why is it called an extra pale ale? Why right. isn't it just called an American pale ale? It's probably them being pretentious. 6.2% um, alcohol by volume, 25 IBU. So a little, a little shy on the IBUs right. and a little high on the ABV for, a pale for an American pale ale. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean... Color seems a little straw-like. Yeah. You know? Um, so a little... Like, it's kind of pale ale-ish. Um, maybe the extra pale ale is the fact that it's not as bitter as a normal American pale ale. You know, normal American pale ale, you're looking at about 45 IBUs, 45 to 50 IBUs. Um, so this is a little lighter on the IBUs, but it's a little heavier on the alcohol content. Let's see what we got when we put our nose to the glass. They bumped up the aroma. They did. That's I mean, real lemony. Yeah. I mean, they did say, like, it, it, there was a description. It was, it was pretty lemony. lemony. It's pretty lemony. Like, so, maybe you were looking at, like, they're trying to do, like, more of an East Coast IPA in a pale ale style. So, like, a little less alcohol. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as heavy in, like, the... Because the, the, it's still pretty clear. Yeah. So, and Roma's nice. Yeah. It smells good. Yeah. It smells tasty. Let's see how it tastes. That's drinkable AF. Yep. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's got a good citrus note to it. Yeah, but not too much. But not too much. A little pithy. Yeah, a little pithy. But like, I think that might just be a little bit of bitterness. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it's not like pithy pithy. It's a little bit of bitter. Um, a more than I expect from twenty five IBUs. 25 that's for IBUs, sure. Yeah. And six point two. It definitely doesn't drink like six point two percent. No, it definitely uh, doesn't. This drinks like a four point five percent or five. Like yeah. it's real really, light, really real light. light drinker, real yeah. light body. Um, all right, that's not too bad. Um, it, like, it's hard to know where to put this style wise. Yeah, all I know is that I'd drink a pint or two or three, especially on a day like today. It's a little yeah. warm, yeah, definitely drinkable. Oh, yeah, yeah, not bad at all. All right, so uh, X10 Extra Pale Ale from uh, Manhattan Project. I have absolutely no idea where to put you. Uh, X10, but uh, aside from in the face. So, yep. here's to that. Cheers. We're going to finish knocking out, get it into our carboy, uh, and uh, then we're going to finish our tasting today with the beer that we brewed last time. You're going to get to do a tasting of one of my home brews, the Soulless Ginger Saison with myself, Bill, and my partner Kira is going to be here too because she can drink the beer because it's reduced gluten. And I'll tell you all about that when we come back. All right, guys, the day is done. We've... Uh We've had quite the day, and it's been a pretty good day, but a long day. We are going to finish it <clears throat> with the very last of uh, the beer we brewed last time. We brewed a ginger saison. Uh, saison is a wonderful style with a great history. Uh, primarily uh, French, uh, northern French and Belgian. It is a, a traditional farmhouse ale. Saison is uh, Flemish for season, um, and. It was made as a beer that was utilizing whatever grains were left over from harvest. So, and this is from anybody else. Like they would be, or they would go like with every, whatever they had left over, whether it was grain or not, they would like, you know, I've got leftover, you know, potatoes. I'm gonna go trade it with this guy for some rye or, or whatever. And they would all, they would get together all the leftover grain that they could and make a beer 
using specific kind of wild yeast strains, but not really wild strains. Most people believe that Saison yeast was, um, was a mutated red wine strain. Um, so it ferments at a much different temperature level and it produces a uh, beer that is very like lemongrass and peppery and it's just lovely and delightful. So we are serving from the Growler Works U-Keg, which is an amazing piece of uh, modern um, hipster technology that basically is a self-pressurized um, uh, growler that you can allow basically to re-pressurize your beer. So if you go out, you know, get a growler fill, you can, yeah, you know, it's re-pressurized and served whenever you want. So, but this was the last of this keg. We blew through this keg. You know, because I mean, it was real good. Yeah. And really yeah. the thing that makes this beer extra special. Yeah, the thing that makes this beer extra special is that it is brewed with a um, specific, uh, specific enzyme in it that is originally created to reduce chill haze. What they realized that aside from just getting rid of chill haze, it also latches onto long, pretty much any long strain protein and breaks it down and drops out of solution. That includes gluten proteins. So what this beer does, what this, what this enzyme does is basically uh, can reduce the gluten content in traditional barley and wheat beers to what the FDA registers as below the threshold to be considered a gluten-free product. Um, I would not recommend full-on celiacs to attempt to drink this beer. However, our test subject here is gluten-sensitive, and she drinks it and doesn't have a single problem with it. Like, right? Hence, we yeah. blew through this Hence cake. why we blew through this cake <laughs> real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also really good. Really, really good. So... Yeah, Saison, uh, mostly, like, this is pre predominantly uh, barley and wheat. Didn't put a whole lot of other fun stuff in it, but real lemongrass. Yeah. Like, and also I put in fresh ginger, so, yes. mm -hmm. which you can definitely get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, good clarity for a home-brewed beer. Like, we didn't filter it. No, Just, it's not filtered yeah. at all. Um... <clears throat> Mm. Just plain old. Yeah, just nice and lemony, lemony gingery. Mm -hmm. This lax little bit has a little bit more of a pepper note to it. Since it does. It, since it's been sitting on the ginger mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it's really yummy. And you wouldn't think that this was this was almost seven percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll sneak up on you. It will. It'll sneak it up and clench in the teeth. <laughs> um, I probably would have liked maybe a little more of like because it, it fermented out pretty dry. I would have liked a little more body, on yeah, it, honestly. Um, just like maybe if I instead of using because we just used I used Pilsner malt, a little bit of Victory, and some wheat. I maybe would have liked maybe add a little more wheat. To this, to kind of I pick that, that a bit more mouthy. Yeah, get that get that mouthfeel into it because we've got different protein structure. Yeah. So you know, a little bit um, different mouthfeel to it. A little more wheat, maybe a little more victory malt. Give it some biscuit, mm -hmm. you know, a little more biscuit quality. Um, all in all, it's... all in all, like this is the first beer that was that I brewed in two or three years at this point. So I'm pretty pleased with it. There's always room for improvement, so but. Uh, uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think we definitely uh, will do that. And uh, when this Chipotle chocolate porter's finished, you'll definitely get a oh, yeah. you'll definitely get some uh, some tastings of that. And uh, we're already talking about because this keg's blown, which means we have to brew, brew another one more. that keg with. So oh, we're still right. trying to figure out um, what I'm gonna brew next. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we'll figure that out. A completely brand new recipe. Yeah, it's like we're, we're starting from scratch. And we're just going to figure out what style we want to brew. And uh, we'll keep you apprised. So, yeah. cheers, friends. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
There we go. Cheers. That's good.